In the first of these Dead Zone videos, I'll be showing you how to make a Dead Zone Strike Force. So you've decided you want to play Dead Zone, but you're not really sure what to buy or how to create a strike force even and looking on YouTube the options on how to actually build a strike force is really limited so I thought I'd take it up to show you how it works and how a turn works and so on and so forth but with this one I'll just show the basics on how to create a strike force Dead Zone is played using an agreed points value so for example you and your opponent agree a game of 200 points so you create a strike team that equals 200 points. For this video and for other videos I'll be using as the main example Forge Fathers as I've got pretty much everything for them. To start with you'll need a leader. Now in this game we'll be going for 150 points just for something simple and for every strike team you have to include one leader you can't have no more you can't have no less. The choice of leaders, for example, for the Forge Fathers are the Steel Warrior Huskar, dependable, got a good supportability, and not that expensive, Forge Fathers anyway. The Brocker Chieftain, really good in close combat and tough, which really makes a lot of difference. He's more used to being in with Brockers, uh, but he hasn't got armour. The Thorgrim Huskar good in close combat and helps others out that have hammers. The Master Artificer with a number of different weapons for both close combat and range and good with brockers and other artificers. The Forge Guard Huskarl dependable, expensive but really good at shooting and the Forge Lord expensive and worth a lot of victory points but really durable and got a good support splat in order to help your force out. For this game, just for the points, I think we'll go for the Steel Warrior Huskarl because he's got good all round stats and he's got a fair few weapon options. But which one do we go for? Do we go for the Forge Hammer and Hailstorm Pistol so we've got an all right close combat and an all right range weapon? Do we go for the dual burst pistols, which has the shortest range, but is a bit more accurate? Or do we go for the Hellstorm rifle, which has longest range and has an arm piercing at range? I'm going to go with the one with the Hellstorm rifle. The reason being is that it's got a fair good range and he has a shoot stat of 3, which means on an 8-sided dash, on the 3 or higher, you've hit. Plus, it's got arm piercing one at range, which means your opponent's armour is not going to mean as much when he shoots at them. The Steel Warrior Huskarl with Hailstorm Rifle is 32 points. So, deducting that from our 150 points puts us on 118. So now we get to select our troops. You can take any amount of troops, and these range from the Brocker, dependable in close combat and good all-rounder even though his shooting capability is a bit less than some of the Forge Fathers. The Steel Warrior good arm piercing weaponry and good all-round stats. No dedicated close combat weapon but still hits pretty well. The Wrecker which is essentially a Steel Warrior with a flamer. Yes it's short range but you'll come to know flamers are always welcome. Burning is fun. A artificer. Basically taking the weapon sorts of the Brocker with the armour capabilities of the Steel Warrior. It's basically the all-rounder of the Forge Fathers. The Militia. While stats aren't as good as pretty much anything else in the Forge Fathers list, he's the cheapest. And while he would be a bit more elite for some other forces, for Forge Fathers, they're really not. Thorgrim, no ranged weapons to speak of, but have the best close combat capability, hitting on threes, and they have a big hammer, which can smash things 
pretty well. And the Forge Guard has the best stats across the board, having fours in shooting, close combat and surviving, has the best armour, has a chance of ignoring a single hit per game, but they are expensive, which, I mean, you're going to be considering what they can do. I'm going to take three troops, and one of them is going to be a Steel Warrior, so we've got a bit of range at shooting, a Wrecker, so we've got some burning going on, and a Thorgrim, so we've got some really good close combat capabilities. Not all troops and the like are the same points cost, but in this case, each one of these are 17 points each. So that means for the troops, it's 51 points. On to the specialists. Specialists usually have more advanced weapons, or better stats, or even some abilities which your troops normally don't have. These are usually more expensive than your troops, so you can't take as many of them. For every troop you take, you can have one specialist. These include the Missile Isilgrim, which is basically a Steel Warrior with a Missile Launcher. The Magma Isilgrim, which is basically a Steel Warrior with a Magma Cannon. Or a Brackham, which is basically a Steel Warrior with an Auto Cannon. These don't have different stats than a normal Steel Warrior, it's just a case of the weapons they've got. The Missile Launcher has the best range and has the best arm, anti-armor capabilities, but they can't move and shoot. The Magma Cannon is a bit shorter range than a Hailstorm Rifle, being range 5 rather than range 6, but have got good AP capabilities, so against most light and mid-armored units, you shouldn't fare too badly. And then we've got the Auto Cannon, which is fairly dependable. It's got good range at range 8, it's got suppression which it will pin enemies, meaning unless you're fairly fast or your forge fathers which can potentially ignore pinning and suppression, you're, you're a good choice. You haven't got A in the AP on you, but you are fairly cheap also. Brockers with magma rifles, these are a bit short range, but they have good AP, AP2, which means mid and light armoured units aren't that hard to take down. Your shoot stats not as good as a normal steel warrior but like a wrecker it burns so you can set things on fire and with AP2 what's not loved about that? Valkyr which is a brocker on a bike these are really fast and can potentially do a fair bit of damage in close combat they also have twin Hellstorm rifles, which are fairly decent at range. Forge Guard with special weapons, such as miss Missile Launcher and Magma Cannon. And the Hammerfish Drop Troop. Basically like a Forge Guard, but with a jump pack, and can drop down like a Meteor. As I've taken three troops, I can take up to three specialists. For this, I'm just going to take one, the Steel Warrior, with Auto Cannon. At range 8, it means you've got good range, and with suppression, it means your opponents are going to have to spend a short action to get up. Which, if your opponents have got things such as sniper rifles, indirect weapons, or heavy weapons, can make all the difference. It can also make a difference if, while they're good in close combat, they're not that fast. A steel warrior with a auto cannon is 19 points, which taking off our list brings us down to 45 points which means we've just got enough points to select a, a support and once you know it we can because for every three troops we take we can take one support I'm gonna take a iron ancestor which has got a twin hellstorm auto cannon and a heavy heat hammer this means he's got a good ranged weapon with suppression capabilities and good close combat weapon. As it's got smash, it adds an extra dice. And being that an Iron Ancestor is size 4, chances are you'll have about 5 or 6 dice in close combat. It's also got 4 armor and 5 health, which means it's fairly durable. There are other Iron Ancestor variants, such as the Doomstorm pattern with two, two arms with 
twin Hellstorm auto cannons. They're the Thor pattern with twin heavy heat hammers and the Hellthermum pattern which has a twin magma cannon and a power claw with built in flamer. So you've got options of having close combat and range or just range or just close combat. This is the versatility of the Iron Ancestor. It is worth a lot of victory points though with all variants being worth 5. This variant of the Ancestor costs 45 points which as it happens is the points we have left. That's it, we've made 150. So there it is. We've got some range support with the Steel Warrior with Hellstorm Raffle and Hellstorm Auto Cannon. We've also got range support from the Iron Ancestor with the twin Hellstorm Auto Cannon. And from the leader with the Hellstorm Auto Cannon, we've got some close combat capabilities with the Thorgrim and also with the Iron Ancestor. We've also got some crowd control and some flamey business with the Wrecker. So, a nice varied all round list. Of course, you could add and take away some of these and change them around depending on your playstyle, but there's a lot of different options to go for. This is just one example as I'm just using one army, but considering the armies out there, you'll find one that suits what you want. So, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching.